got no sound here? Yeah, we have. Good morning, Harbour Church. It is great to see you here this morning. Um, if you're just coming in, if I could ask you to take your seats, that would be great. Good morning at home via the wonder of the internet. Um, hope you're all ready with your, your coffee and your bread and your juice and everything ready for the service this morning. We're going to have a fantastic time in the presence of the Lord this morning. Um, Sam, my daughter, just reminded me that it was actually 10 years ago today that she and I first came to Harbour Church. Wow. And that was just visiting because Sam had come over for an interview for a job. Or no, she just got the job and was just moving to the, the area. So the, the question for you, Gareth, is can you remember what you preached on? <laughs> yes, I can. You preached on love in Folkestone. And, and you had a mug, a mug, yeah, that's right. It was fantastic, you know. And I have to say, it was, it was, Sam had been praying. She wanted a really friendly church. And when we walked in, we just felt it was home. And it, it, was, it was absolutely brilliant. And as you say, we're still here. I know you've been trying to get rid of us, but we're still here. Um, but, you know, what a great place to be. So 10 years today, um, and thank God that he spoke to Sam and told her to move to Folkestone. Otherwise, we're still being in Ireland. Anyway, moving on. Um, I hope you had a great Christmas, everyone. I know it's in the past now. But sometimes, I don't, I don't know about you, but sometimes I, I struggle with letting Christmas go. You know, I, I really enjoy Christmas. And when it comes to taking down the decorations, I find it really difficult. You know, I think oh, I'll do it today. And I think, no, I won't. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll just leave it for an extra day. And maybe I'll leave it for an extra day. Well, this year, no, no Lynn? No, okay. Well, that's me. This year, I, I had some help. Um, I had some motivation. Because last week after church, Zoe came back with me, and a four-year-old motivated me. When she came in the hall, she said, I can help you take those cards down, you know. <laughs> So, after lunch, we set to and we took down the cards, but then it went from the cards to, we can take down those things on the tree, we can take, you know, and we stripped the whole house of any decorations. And I have to say, what is usually a chore turned out to be something fantastic. I just had such a great time with my granddaughter taking down the, the decorations and putting them away. Um, it was a real blessing. But, you know, I think, well, why am I telling you this? It's, it's basically because sometimes, whether it's a good thing that you, you've, you've gone through, like Christmas, and you've had a great time, and you're trying to hold on to it, or something that maybe hasn't been so good, and you're trying to let go of it. But sometimes we struggle to let go of yesterday. Um, and, you know, we can't hold on to it, but we try to. Well, I just want to encourage you today that there is one who wants you to move on. I'm not saying move on from the church, but move on from yesterday, whether it was a good experience or whether it wasn't such a good experience. Because he has something so amazing for you and me that we don't know yet. And the Word of God says to us in Philippians, for we can do everything through Christ, who gives us strength. You know, sometimes we, we struggle to let go, but if we will dare to listen to Jesus, dare to trust him and step out in faith, like Sam did 10 years ago, it's amazing what God can do. You know, there is so much potential in this year that's ahead of us for each one of us. And Jesus knows just how to motivate us and get us stepping out in faith. You know, we're going to be having a week of prayer coming up very soon, next week. And it's all about breakthrough. Well, this could be your year of breakthrough. I just want to encourage you this morning. Dare to trust Jesus. Dare to believe that you can do everything through him who gives you strength. Praise God. Let's just pray. Father, we just thank you for Jesus. We thank you that you love us so much, Lord. 
that you want the very best for us, that you've got great plans and ambitions for us. And Father, it's up to us just to trust you and step out, hold in your hand and see where you will lead us. Father, we just commit ourselves to you right now, Lord. And even this morning, Lord, will you start to speak to us and encourage us and show us the way ahead, Lord. Lord, we just commit our way to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, good morning, everybody. You all look wonderful this morning. Would you like to stand? <laughs> Yay, thanks, Sean. Sean was ready. Let's worship our beautiful King this morning. Kind of chosen songs that boast a bit about God. I love to boast about God. I love to just focus on how amazing He is. So sometimes when, as Tim said, we don't feel like the best overcomers in the world, we know that we can just lift up the one who is. So let's just do that this morning to our beautiful overcomer, Jesus. Then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what? 
We just fix our eyes on who you are this morning, Lord. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. And all he can do for us. We're fixing our eyes on Jesus. Not on ourselves. Not on this world. We're fixing our eyes on Jesus. And all he can do for us.
Oh, Father, help us to really get a hold of that this morning. It's not just a song. You are the chain-breaking, miracle-making, prodigal-saving Son of the living God. That is who you are, Lord. So, Father, when we're whining and looking at our own weaknesses and saying, Oh, oh, I got this and I got that. Lord, just help us to just say, But Jesus, but Jesus, but Jesus is enough. Jesus is more than enough. He can do what I cannot do. He is strong enough. He is great enough. He is Father enough. He is healer enough. He is giver enough. In me, through me, around me. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
to wake us up, Lord. Revive us. I'm really aware that we, we, we're going next week into a week of prayer. But I'm, I'm really aware that we're singing now, come awaken your people. You know, we want to go into a place of praying next week for breakthrough. We want to see chains broken. We want to see uh, people set free from the bondage that they're in. And, and in one sense, I want to encourage you right now, this week, be saying, God, what breakthrough am I praying for? When we get together next week to pray, who am I praying for? But first of all, I want our prayer to be, come awaken your people. And we've been praying it regularly the last few weeks in our uh, Wednesday prayer meetings. God, would you stir us to pray and this morning I feel like it, it is a time to pause and pray that prayer as we sing come awaken your people come awaken this city well let's pray first of all come awaken this people and that means me praying God would you awaken me God would you awaken me and so in this moment I feel like that this is the moment where together we say as individuals, does that make sense? God, would you awaken me? Awaken this people. Let's pray. Just pray that together. Whatever, whatever way you want to express that to God, let's just let's do that right now. God, would you awaken me? Stir something in my spirit. Father, would you, would you come by your Holy Spirit and, and put a rocket up me? <laughs> Get me going, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Father, that we don't go into next week with dry prayers, but we go into next week with because we've heard from you, because we know what you're saying, because, because we, we, we know what you want to do in this place, because we heard your voice. So, Father, we pray right now, would you stir our hearts? Would you do something in us as a church this week that we're ready next week to do something in this town, in this city? Father, I pray you'd stir our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Morning, everyone. I'm going to share a couple of thoughts that God's given me as we move into this time of communion together. Over the last year, I've spent a lot of time in prayer and discussions with family and friends about my busyness and my priorities. Sometimes I feel better about it, sometimes I feel overwhelmed or anxious, and sometimes a bit low, needing a break. Luke 12, verse 7 says, Indeed, the hairs of your head are all numbered. This basically means God knows us more than we know ourselves, and this has become increasingly apparent to me over the year. God knows when we need a rest, and God knows when we need to work. Recently has been one of those times I felt overwhelmed, just a bit down in general, but God pulled me out, as always. A week before Christmas, we sung a song called Everything by Tim Hughes, and that spoke to me. It says, God in my resting, God in my working, be my everything. The premise of the song is that God is with us in everything that we do, but those particular words spoke to me and helped me realign my focus on Jesus. God in my resting, it's not only okay to take a rest, it's vital to take a rest. Jesus took, God took a rest on the seventh day of creation. God is also in our working, and that could be our day jobs, looking after our families and children, or serving in the church. Everything I do, I do for Jesus, resting or working. And ultimately, as a Christian, I believe that time on earth is for serving him. Everything I do should be to bring honor to God. Colossians 3 verse 2 says, Since you have been raised with Christ... Set your hearts on the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things above and not on earthly things. We have to set our minds heaven-bound and realign our focus on Jesus. We have to realize that although it can feel long, life on earth is a drop in the ocean compared to our time in heaven with him. When I get to heaven, I want to hear the words, Well done, good and faithful servant. As I pray and we take our juice and our bread, take a moment to reflect on your resting and your working. Is God at the center of everything that you do? Is your mind aligned with Jesus? Father, as we take the bread and the juice to remember what you did for us, to remember your sacrifice, help us to align our minds with you, Lord. Help us to put you first in everything that we do, whether it's resting or working. Be with us, Lord. Amen. There is a king seated above us. Let every heart receive him now. Whether it's praise, he will inhabit, and there will be grace and mercy over And every burden will be lifted in your presence, and every trophy will be laid down at his feet.
Thanks so much. Praise God. Please take your seats. Well, Mary Jane will be preaching in a few moments, but we've got a couple of quick announcements before that. Um, first of all, as, as Gareth already said, uh, next week we start a week of prayer. Um, and it's starting Saturday morning at um, 8.30 with a prayer walk from the building here. Mary Jane's going to be leading us in that. Um, so I'm sure she's got great things in store. We're going to be, who knows where we'll be going, but it'll be a great time. Followed by when, uh, Tuesday, uh, Sunday night rather, it's time of worship and prayer um, at 6.30. And then through the week, um, Monday evening, 7.30, Tuesday, 12.30. It's all in the bulletin. Every other day we do the evening and, and then every other day we do the morning, the lunchtime prayer for breakthrough. And then on Friday the 21st, from 9 till midnight, we'll have half a night of prayer and worship. Um, so you'll obviously hear more details about that. It'll be coming through on your texts, I'm sure. Um, or emails or whatever, but I would encourage you to be involved in it because we want to see this this place changed. I don't mean just this place. We want to see this town changed. We want to see this place changed. We want to see this place changed. Um, and the only way to do it is by praying, getting in front of the, the Lord Jesus Christ and letting him do what he wants to do with us. Anyway, um, also this week we've got Harbour Kids Clubs, uh, that's starting back on Wednesday at 5.30, um, just let you know that. Um, and Mary Jane, you're going to tell us about Walk Through the Bible. This one. Am I on? Hello? Hello? I have switched, oh yeah, I have switched on, brilliant. Okay, um, I just wanted to... Um, quickly highlight it's been on the email for a little while and you might have spotted it you might have missed it but we have got coming up in February walk through the Bible New Testament now who did the Old Testament with us kind of remember when it was yes okay so you guys know exactly how amazing this is and this is like the follow-on if you have never heard of walk through the Bible I have to say it is like the best thing you could ever do um, this is going to be the New Testament. So basically, we will be going, we'll have a day together um, here at church. Um, you bring a packed lunch, we'll do teas and coffees, and I'll find all sorts of treats as well to keep us going. Um, and then we've got um, Paul Keyes, who's the director of Walk for the Bible. He's going to come, and he's going to present basically the whole of the New Testament. So we're going to go through the whole book of the New Testament, the whole books of the New Testament in that day. And it's very interactive. You, you pay £14 for the day, but you get a book that takes you all through it. You would also get a little like pull out map thing that also has everything to do with it and a little devotional thing. And it's very interactive. It does have like hand signs and things. So if you did the Old Testament, I don't even know whether anyone can remember it. Look, I can see, oh, we start like this, we do creation, fall, flood, nations, Abraham. Oh, I've forgotten it. Abraham, haha, ha, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Passover, and you keep going all the way through. And that, you use words and actions, and it helps you to remember the whole of the New Testament. I have never done the New Testament. Um, I teach the Old Testament in schools, and it's amazing. Have you done, the, Gareth's done the New Testament? I am really, 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 really excited about this, and I would love you to come and just enjoy this day with us. So, there is a link which I think is in the news sheet, and it's been in the email. You can book on through that link. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can pay through that way as well. However, I am going to ask, I haven't spoken to them yet, so I'm hoping they'll be um, okay with this. The welcome team, I'm going to give them a little sign-up sheet. If you want to come along, maybe you could see them afterwards if they're happy to have this, and you can just add your name on there, at least to begin with, and then you can either go and log on and pay that way or you can give us the money in person. I don't mind how you pay, whether it's cash or going online, but it would be great to have as many of us as possible to come along. Um, we are going to let other churches in the area know as well because this is such a great day. You do not want to miss out. There we go. Done. Oh, date. Yes. Oh, yes. So um, 11 to... 17, so 11 up to adult, um, can come free with a paying adult. So if you've got teenagers, that kind of thing, they are allowed to come along free. 
Um, they will, I think they still get the book and all of that kind of stuff as well, but you don't need to pay for them as long as they come with a paying adult. The date is Saturday, the 5th of no, no, not November. January, February. Where are we? I don't know. February, that's the one. That's the one. Saturday, February the 5th, which is in a few weeks' time. So it's coming up soon. So get yourself signed up. You really don't want to miss out. Or come and chat to me afterwards if you want to know more um, about it. Fantastic, thanks. Okay, um, well, it's going to be a great day, so can I encourage you to sign up as soon as possible so you don't miss out, because it will get full up. Um, right, I don't know, before the kids go out, are there any birthdays today? Any birthdays we're celebrating this week? No? Then I don't have to sing to you. What a, what a blessing. <laughs> Okay, the children can go out to um, creche and kids clubs or whatever it is um, that's going on out there. And Mary Jane is now going to come and preach to us. So give her a big welcome as she comes. Just getting all my bits together. Do you want me here or do you want me up? Shall I go up? Is that better? So that everyone can see me. Oh, have I now messed up the cameras? I might be moving about a bit. <laughs> might be. <laughs> bit of an active one today again. Good morning, everyone. Are we good this morning? sun is shining. It's been lovely sat there. I'm like, oh, I love it when the sun, you close your eyes, you just feel the sun on your face. Something about that is brilliant. Well, I'm really excited um, to um, just bring God's word to you this morning and just share with you what God's been speaking to me um, this week. And if you have Bibles, then I would like you to turn to John chapter 17. We're going to be looking at John chapter 17. It will come up on the screen as well. And um, if you've got it in your Bibles, feel free to follow on. We're going to be looking at this chapter, and it's titled in my book, The Prayer of Jesus. So this is Jesus just before he gets arrested. And we get this chapter, which is Jesus' prayer, what he prays to God the Father. And I'm going to read the whole thing. We're not going to focus on the whole thing because there is, there's so much. There's so much that I could pick out from this today. But I want us still to read it all because it's good to read God's Word. And even though I'm going to focus on more the end bit, as I'm just reading, will you just allow the words to speak to you? And there might be something that just God wants to bring to you and talk to you about just in this moment. So I'm going to read um, John chapter 17. Okay, so it says, after saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. For you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. I have revealed to you, revealed you to the ones you gave me from this world. They were always yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything I have is a gift from you. For I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it and know that I came from you and they believe you sent me. My prayer is not for the world, world, but for those you have given me because they belong to you. All who are mine belong to you and you have given them to me so they bring me glory. Now I am departing from the world. They are staying in this world, but I am coming to you. Just going to pause at a moment. Jesus has at the beginning been praying for himself, been talking about what's about to happen. But at this point of the minute, he's praying for his disciples. 
He's praying for those that have come to know him in the time on earth. So I just want you to understand. So, Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. During my time here, I protected them by the power of the name you gave me. I guarded them so that not one was lost except the one headed for destruction as the scriptures foretold. Now I am coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them in this world so they would be filled with my joy. I have given them your word. And the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. So now, Jesus is saying, I want to pray for basically us. This is us now, his prayer for us. And I love this, it's just a little aside how it says, for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I love it. Jesus there going, yeah, I know that my message is going to keep going. I'm confident that my message is going to be shared. I'm confident that the believers are going to grow. And I love that. Okay, he says this. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, so they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. O righteous Father, the world doesn't know you, but I do, and these disciples know you sent me. I have revealed you to them, and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them, and I will be in them. Oh, I've read a lot there, haven't I? <laughs> I haven't got time to dig into all of it. Um, I am going to share a little bit of this prayer, but you know what? I'm actually going to ask... Can we just pause and let's just pray? I just want us to pray that that we will just really hear God's voice this morning. Father God, I just want to ask that over these next few moments, will we all just hear you this morning? Father, we love your word. I thank you for your word that's been given to us, for us. And I just pray that in this time that we have together now, will you guide us through your word? May you reveal to us what it is that you want us to understand today. And I pray that your word will reach our hearts this morning. God, I pray that we will wake up and listen this morning too. May we not allow our minds to wander. We talked about fixing our eyes on you. We fix our eyes on you now and say, God, will you speak to us? And speak to our hearts. Amen. So this morning, I want us to look at this last bit of this prayer, okay? There is so much in this whole chapter, and I I would love to go through everything, but I can't. I'm just going to focus in right at the end. And those last verses from verse 20, where Jesus is praying for us. Jesus is praying for us, the believers. And what he says, and hopefully you've got the gist as we've read it, is that he prays for unity for us. It says in verse 21, I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you. His prayer for us here, us believers, is that we will be one. And you know, before I go diving in to go in, okay, what on earth does that mean? What does that look like? 
Do you know, I just find it really powerful that here is Jesus just before he's about to be arrested. He's going to go to the cross. He is here praying to God the Father. He's praying for us, and he could pray anything. He could pray anything for us. But this is what he chooses to pray for us. He prays that we will be one. This is his prayer. And I find that in itself quite powerful. This matters to Jesus. This matters to him. This is important to him that he would pray it for us. That fact in itself this morning, my prayer is that that will just reach us and realize this is important. It is his desire for us. It's his longing for us. And, you know, I'm sure lots of us have heard people talk about unity. That word will be used a lot. And, and I, I wonder, as I say that word, unity, as you know, I'm going to be talking about unity. I wonder what that conjures up for you. I wonder where your mind is already going. I wonder what your understanding is. I wonder, is it, is it positive? I wonder whether when we say unity, you actually think negatively about it. Maybe you have had a bad experience of what's meant to be unity. Maybe you're there going, okay, I'm going to switch off. I've heard this before. Yep, she's going to tell us. We've all got to get along. Brilliant. Please don't switch off. <laughs> Please don't switch off. Because as we've just realized, this matters. I'm talking about this today because this is Jesus' prayer for us. This is what matters to him. It is important. And so today, I want us to just look a little more deeply, a little closer into, well, what was Jesus praying? What did he mean? What does this unity, what does this being one look like? And the key is what he says, that they will be one just as you and I are one. Just as Jesus and the Father are one. You see, we need to understand the relationship of Jesus and the Father in order to understand how we can be one. They are our example of what unity looks like. But even more than that, not just the relationship with Jesus and the Father, we actually need to go, okay, well, it's not just Jesus and the Father. There's Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. There is the whole Godhead. And so if we want to really understand, well, Jesus is praying that we'll be one as they are one. Well, we need to understand, well, how are they one? We need to get a bit of an understanding of the unity of the Godhead. And if we get an understanding of the unity of the Godhead, then we'll have a better understanding of what that means for us to be one. So, because I am a visual learner, anyone else a bit of a visual learner? Okay, some of us. And, you know, I, I do like to have things to aid me. So I am going to get a bit visual. I've got my, be oh, look, my beautiful assistants are ready already. Look, look at this. Yes, let's give, out, give them a little round of applause. Because I think for us to really grasp this today, it needs more than just my words. And this also helps me so I don't lose my track of thought as well. If you can bring it right up into the middle, because then the camera hopefully can zoom in on it as well so that everyone can see. Do you want to come this way just a little bit? Is that right? Is that all good camera-wise? Yes? Fabulous. Okay, so here we've got, this is the Godhead. This is the Trinity. Now, what we're going to do today then is we're going to try and get some sense of what the Trinity is, what the Godhead is. Now, I say some sense because I'm not sure that in 20 minutes I can really fully explain the Trinity and the Godhead. I'm not even sure that even if I had 20 hours, 20 days, that I would be able to fully explain it because I don't fully get it, okay? I'm going to just say that now, okay? Um, I love it. Katie's like, is this good? She's excited. Because, you know, actually, 
I'm going to share some stuff, but at the same time, even as I've been preparing, I've been sat there and I was just going, oh God, it just blows my mind. <laughs> okay, at the same time, we cannot fathom this. We cannot fully comprehend the Godhead, the Trinity. We cannot grasp it, but we can begin to grasp it and we can begin to dig deep and go, well, what does that mean? What does that look like? So, just so that we realize, this isn't going to be like literally in a nutshell, done, boom, we're done, okay? So, just know that. So, we're going to take a moment because you see, this is our example of how we're to be one. This is to be our pattern. The unity that is the Godhead is the foundation for us as believers and the unity that we have. So, Let's put, I'm going to get my pens now. I'm going to do this bit. I'm going to do writing. Okay. So let's look at what, first of all, we've got here, the Godhead is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, to begin with, we do need to remember, that I'm hoping this all works with me writing on here, that there is one God. Okay. Let's know that from the start. There is one God. So I'm just going to write that on here. I'm really hoping that shows up just about. Maybe I need a different color pen. Okay, there is one God. One God and God is three distinct persons. Okay, where we can see here Father, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to write, let's see if this pen shows up a little bit better. I think they're about the same. Okay, can we just about see that? Distinct persons. Okay, we have God as three distinct persons. Do you know, I love the story of Jesus' baptism. That is a brilliant place that we see the, the unity, the Godhead. We see the Trinity all there, but three distinct persons. We have Jesus as he comes up out of the water. We've got God the Father speaking over him, this is my son. And we have the Spirit like a dove coming upon him. So in that moment, we can see that the three distinct persons. And it's really important that we realize they are distinct, okay? So the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Father. Okay, they are distinct. However, they're all God. Mind blown already? Just that in myself. I just don't. They are all fully God and yet three distinct persons. Another thing we need to know about the Godhead is that they are, they all have a different purpose. Okay. They have different purposes. They have different roles to play within the unity of the Godhead. We've got God the Father. Now, God the Father, he planned how to save us, and he sent Jesus, the Son. God the Son came into the world, and he was the one that fulfilled that plan. He was the one that came and accomplished the plan that the Father had. He was the one, Jesus died and rose again to save us. Jesus reveals the Father to us. Jesus gives us access to the Father. And then we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who is sent by the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son sent the Holy Spirit once Jesus ascended. And the Holy Spirit came to reveal Jesus, came to lead us into truth, to convict us of sin. The Holy Spirit, there's there's loads of passages. I haven't got time to read everything, so I know I'm kind of throwing everything out. Go away after today and just read. If you read John chapter 14 and 16, you can read lots about the Holy Spirit. He's our teacher, our counselor, our comforter. His purpose is to empower us for mission. So, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three distinct persons, all with different purposes and different roles. 
and they are all equal. They are all equal. Do you know what I love? We had the, our baptism service, didn't we, last week? When we were baptized, we baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. They are all equal. In John chapter 5, Jesus talks a bit more, and I'll refer back to this again later, but a bit more about his relationship with the Father. And he says this. He says, He, the Father, has given the Son absolute authority to judge so that everyone will honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Jesus and the Father are honored equally. They see each other as equal. They take pleasure in honoring each other. So the Godhead, the unity Godhead, three distinct persons, three different purposes, they are all equal. The Godhead is also, fit this one in. I'm going to come down here. They are also inseparable. I'm hoping I'm spelling it right. Is it? Oh, no. What, what is it? Is that, is that what it is? Inseparable. Is it meant to be? Oh, I'm just going to leave it. It'll make, my, it'll make it look messy if I start scribbling it out. can't cope with that. Okay, I'm going to leave it. Actually, I have done it with an A on my notes. So probably it is an A. Okay, so the Godhead is inseparable, okay? There's so many passages, even just we're talking, where it talks about Jesus, he says, and I'm in you, and you're in me, and you're in me, and you're in me, and, and they're together, they're together. You cannot separate each one of these out. Are you still with me? Yeah? Okay. You're still with me, that's good. So the Godhead is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. One God, three distinct persons, different purposes and roles. They're all equal and they're inseparable. And you know, as we read in the Bible, we, we learn so much more about the nature of this Godhead. I'm going to come over here with my notes, so I'm going to add on loads now. Because within this Godhead, there is trust. Within this Godhead, there is, I'm hoping you can see my writing, respect. Within the Godhead, there's honor. We've talked about that already. Within the Godhead, we get obedience. Jesus was obedient to the task given to him. We see peace within the Godhead. We see submission within the Godhead. We see harmony within the Godhead. We see teamwork within the Godhead. We see the fruits of the Spirit. I'm not going to list them all on here, okay? We'll be here forever, and I might run out of paper. We see the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Do you know what? I reckon if we had time, we could add loads more onto that. And I hope that actually you are. You're going, oh, but and when we see this in the Godhead, we see this in the Godhead. It, 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 the list could go on. We see trust, respect, honor, harmony, teamwork, obedience, peace, submission. We see the fruits of the Spirit. And, you know, we can see all this. As we read the Bible, I haven't got time to look at loads of passages. I wish I could, you know, I've already had to cut my notes. I always do that. I find things and I go, oh, this will be good to share. Go away and look at John chapter 5, verses 19 to 37, where Jesus talks about his relationship with the Father. And we get all of this. Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 to 11, we get the whole thing of the attitude of Christ, where he humbled himself in obedience we get Galatians 5, 22, where it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. But you see, ultimately, the Godhead is rooted in this.
I'm hoping you can see that. The Godhead is rooted in love. The Godhead, the unity that we find in the Godhead is rooted in love. And in Jesus' prayer, we read about that. If we go back to John 17, and he's talking, verse 23, I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. And then right at the end, I've revealed you to them and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them and I will be in them. Love, love. God is love. The nature of the Godhead is love. That is it. Full stop. End of. God is love. If you go to 1 John chapter 4, we get that great passage about how God is love. Do you know what? Like I said earlier, there could be loads to add here, okay? And I would say, go away and start to go, okay, what what does the Godhead look like? The idea is this, this here, this is unity. This is unity in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is to be our foundation. If we are to get anywhere close to really fulfilling what Jesus is saying, we've got to realize this. This is our pattern. This is our example. This is our foundation. So I'm hoping my beautiful assistants might come and help again because we're going to move it on. Thank you. I love it. They just, do you need me as well? Can you? uh... Okay, we're going to add to my illustration now. Okay, so we've looked at The unity of the Godhead, okay, this is our example for us. And so we're now going to put us at the top. I'll hold it there. Does it reach? I hope I didn't cut it too short. That's all right. It's not over my words, so that's okay. Thank you very much. Well, they're just doing that side. Okay. So we're adding on this next layer, the body of Christ, okay? So this is us. We are the body of Christ. Did you know that? Okay? This is us as believers. And so if this is to be our example of how we are to be one, then this is going to help us because... Do you know what? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three distinct persons. Do you know, within this room, we have, I don't know how many, 80 distinct people within the believers of our church. Those that aren't here might be at the live stream at home, wherever, however many it is. We have this diversity among us here. Do you know, just like how they all have a different purpose, we, in the body of Christ, have different purposes and different roles. Are you with me? We have different purposes. We have different roles. Do you know as well that as the body of Christ, we are all equal? Notice I've put that in capitals at the top. God, if we are truly to be one, as Jesus is talking about, we've got to get a grip of this. We've got to really understand that and know we are equal. No one of us is more important than the other. No one of us is greater than the other. We are equal. We are the body. We are one. Yes. Do you know what I love when I read that bit about how Jesus and the Father, that they equally honor each other. and They take delight in that. That's, that's a model for us, that we would equally honor each other. And I love that, that we will delight in it, that we will take pleasure in honoring each other. This is really important. This is what it means to be one. 
So if this is our example, then the body of Christ we need, we should have trust within our body. We should have respect. I'm going to go for copying it all, so bear with me. We should have honor. We've talked about honor. Harmony. Oh, I hope you can read my writing. Teamwork. What else have we got? Obedience. Peace. Submission. I'm sorry, my writing's probably getting harder to read. Fruits of the Spirit. If the fruits of the Spirit is in the unity of the Godhead, then for us, as the body of Christ, we should be seeing the fruits of the Spirit at work in us. What have I missed off? Okay. Inseparable. Do you know what? We need each other. (laughs) We're not designed to be apart, and it's not how Jesus wants us. He wants us to be one. He wants us to be inseparable. We need each other. And, you know, as I've been going through this, I reckon lots of you would have been thinking as well, and we're going to turn to it, of that great passage in 1 Corinthians. And we're going to turn to it, and we're going to read it. We're going to read it again because it's good to read God's Word. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I can't remember if I told you this one, James, but if you're able to get it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, is this great passage that talks about this the body of Christ. And as I read this now, having looked at this a little bit, let's read it in the light of understanding the Godhead as we read this. It says, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, some are free. We're all different, distinct people. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Yet the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. We're all equal. This is what this is. We're all equal here. And if the ear says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. I love that verse. I've underlined it in my Bible. I'm just going to read that one again. This isn't in my notes. This is just me now just reading it. But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. You are placed just where he wants you. How many times do we look to everyone else? Oh, they're placed over there. I want to be over there. Why have you placed me here, God? I want to be over there. That's the better one. It's not better because we're all equal, okay? That whole comparison trap, that is just it. It's a trap. I'm guilty of that. Anyone else? Where we go into that, well, do you know what? That doesn't bring unity. That doesn't make us one. And it's not what Jesus says of us. Okay. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen, while the more honorable parts do not require this special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members. I like that word, harmony. We've put that on our list. So that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. I love that bit too. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. Each of us is a part of it. You know, go away and just read that more (laughs) and just allow it to speak. I haven't got time to pull it apart even more, but it's such a great passage. And, you know, there's one thing I haven't added on yet, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to make us turn to Colossians first. 
in Colossians chapter 3. Again, another chapter, just go away and read. But it talks about what we're to clothe ourselves with, which is, which is this. All the things we're to clothe ourselves with are the things that are part of the Godhead, and we clothe ourselves. And I love this verse where it says, verse 14, above all. Now, above all means this is the main thing. Clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Just as the Godhead is rooted in love, we, as the body of Christ, are to be rooted in love. Love is key. We're to clothe ourselves in love. Love is central to our unity, central to how we're going to be one. Another great passage, if you want to read it, that kind of links in Romans chapter 12. Go away and look at this one. Talks a lot about how we're to be. And at verse 9, it says this don't just pretend to love others, really love them. That's a great verse, isn't it? Oh my word. How many of us are guilty of that? Okay, come on, we're not perfect. Don't just pretend. No more pretending, church. Come on. Let's do this properly. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection. And take delight in honoring each other. Do you know what? There are, there's so many verses I could, I could read, and I haven't got time this morning, but the, when I've been going, right, go away, read this chapter, go away, read this chapter, can I encourage you to do that? Go away, read it, and, and, and gain a deeper understanding of what we are talking about. Do you know, the more we love God, the more we are immersed in his love, the more that we will love one another, and the more we will become one, as Jesus is telling us we're to be. Do you know, as I was preparing I read something this week, which I thought was quite good. And it said this. It said, this unity, so the unity, the oneness that Jesus is talking about, is already in existence. It's already achieved. We are one because we're believers. We are the body of Christ. But it says this. We are one, but it's also something that needs perfecting. And I love that. We're not there yet. <laughs> we're still walking it. We've got to get better at it. We are one, but we need to be perfecting it. So we've got here the unity of the Godhead. This is our pattern for the unity of us as the body of Christ. But there's one more bit that I want to add in to this. And I'm going to flip back to that John chapter 17. Because... Jesus said, didn't he? Let's read it again. Verse 21. I pray that you will all be one, just as you and I are one. So we will be one, just as the Godhead is one. And then it says this. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and may they be in us. May they be in us. I'm just looking for my gaffer tape. Oh, did you? Oh, you pinched it. Thanks. <laughs> poor throw. Poor throw, Gav. Okay. <laughs> so Jesus is saying there's another element to us to really understand. When he prays, oh, God, may they be one. There's another element we need. Sorry. I haven't practiced this. I was hoping I could have. You see, that they will be in us. We are joined to the Godhead. We, yeah, it's not going to work. I d managed one. Could you maybe just go for some strips all the way down there? Okay, I'm doing this just because uh, I'm a visual learner, okay? For me, to get a little picture just helps to go, oh, what is this, Okay. He is saying that they will be in us, that we will be in him. We are invited into this relationship and this beautiful, beautiful unity of the Godhead. We are part of that. 
We are to be rooted in Jesus. We are to be in relationship with the Father. We're to be living and walking every day in step with the Spirit. Do you know, I love that chapter, John, John chapter 15, when Jesus talks about how he's the vine. He's the vine and we're the branches. And what does he say? Remain in me. This is us, okay, remaining in him. We are to be stuck to him. Makes us inseparable then, doesn't it? <laughs> we are inseparable. I love those verses in Colossians 2. I know I'm throwing out so many verses. I apologize, but it's great. Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7, where it talks about, may you be rooted. May you continue to live in him. And will your roots grow down deep? Grow down deep. Almost if I could, I'd be going, Dave, can you come and just gaffer tape, gaffer tape, gaffer tape, gaffer tape, and just keep adding layer and layer and layer and layer because that's the kind of relationship we need to be in. That that relationship is so strong, so rooted. We are stuck there. Absolutely. Can I urge us, church, oh, make that your goal for 2022. Make that your individual goal. But can I say, can we as a church, because we are one body, together, let's together go so deep in our relationship with Jesus. May we stick so much gaffer tape on there that there is no way of being able to separate us from God. This is, this is what I want us to, I hope I'm, you're getting it. Are you getting it? This is for us. This relationship of the Godhead, the unity of the Godhead, the unity of the body of us, and our relationship in with that, that is unity. That is unity. It is all interlinked. It is all crucial. And can I say this? We cannot achieve unity apart from this. We cannot achieve this oneness if we are apart from that. Do you know, my prayer today, I'm very nearly, we're nearly at the end. My prayer today is the same as that of Jesus. And as I've just been, over the last few days, literally, as I've just been reading this, I've just found myself going, oh, yes, praying for us. I want to join with Jesus and say, yes, Jesus, may we be as one. Jesus, I pray that for Harbour. I pray that for the church in Folkestone. I pray that for us. May we be one. May we be one like you are one. May we be full of trust and respect and honor. May we recognize we have different purposes. We have a diversity among us. We are all equal. We are rooted in love. We show the fruits of the spirits of love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, all of that. Oh, that is my prayer. Jesus, yes. And may we be in you. That is key. Every single bit is key. If we're not in him, we're not going to achieve the unity. If we're over here and we're not on there, it's not going to happen. And can I say that the enemy will do all he can to not make this happen? He will want to try and rip off those bits of gaffer tape. And he'll want to trip us up in your own personal walk. You're going, no, you don't need to read your Bible today. Why don't you go on Facebook and watch some Netflix instead? And he's ripping off that gaffer tape. You go, uh uh-uh. Put the tape back on. The enemy's aim is to cause disunity. Uh, And I haven't, again, got time, and I'm really conscious of time. The New Testament, you know, we're warned about division among the church. Let's not allow division to come and rip up this, okay? That is not of Jesus. That is not his heart for us. That is not what he longs for us. He longs for us to be one as the Godhead is one, as Jesus and the Father is one, and that we will be one with them. Wow. (laughs) One last final point. If we go back to Jesus' prayer, we've talked about how this this is his heart, this is his longing. It's important to him. And I love 
that we hear why it's so important. Verse 21. I'm going to read, how many times I've read it? I don't know, but I'm just going to go again. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. May they be in us, this is it, so that the world will believe you sent me. This is why our unity is so important. It's not actually for us. It's great, that's a bonus. <laughs> it's not actually about us. Jesus longs for us to be one so that others may be able to come and be a part of it too. It is our witness, our unity is our witness. Our unity is our testimony. Our unity is our story that is going to show everybody else, wow, God sent Jesus to die for me. And that people will come and join in with that body. This is important. I just love this. It reminds us that, you know what, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's actually about God. <laughs> Our unity is for his glory. Our unity is so that others can see God. I want to read these couple of verses. Romans. Romans chapter 15. Another great passage. You know what, this is great. Just go and read the whole Bible. It's just all good. It's all good. Okay. Again, this chapter is talking about living to please others, and it's great. I, I wish I had time, but I'm not going to read all of it. Um, but I will read from verse 5, just verses 5 and 6. May God, who gives this patience and encouragement, help you live in complete harmony with each other as is fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. And this is it. It says, then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it's about. That's what we are here for. Do you know I love that verse in Romans 11 where it says, For everything comes from him, exists by his power, and is intended for his glory. Our unity is intended for his glory. Our unity is to witness to others to his glory, not ours. It's not about us. It's not about us going, yeah, well, we great. We were one. Pat on the back. Uh-uh, because that's not been one. <laughs> it's for his glory. I'm going to finish uh, by praying. Jesus prayed for us. He prayed for us, you and me, that we will be one, just as he and the Father are one. He prays that we will be in him so that the world will see. We've talked today about how this if we want to grasp the body of Christ and our own unity, we've got to come here. I've really kind of skimmed through lots of this. Oh, do you know what? Go away and get to understand more of who God is. As we discover more and more of who he is, then we'll be able to be more and more who he wants us to be. This is unity. And I want to finish by praying and I wonder whether we could stand, if you're able to stand. If not, you might just want to raise a hand. But will you stand with me? Because we are the body. <laughs> it's no good me standing. I'm going to pray for you. This is me. I want to pray for us. And you know you can pray for us too. And all I want to do to end in our prayers is to pray as Jesus prayed. I want us to pray that prayer, that we will be one. We want to echo his heart and his longing. And may I just urge you, let's go away and pray this. Pray. You can go and pray and continue to pray and say, God, help us as a church to be one. Let's pray together. Father God, I want to just thank you first for who you are. I want to thank you as we've looked today a little bit 
we've just got a little scratch, a little glimpse of what it means, the Godhead, the unity of who you are. I thank you for who you are, God. And today, we as believers here at Harbour, standing here now, we want to join with the words that Jesus prayed and say, God, help us to be one. Help us as a church to be one as you are one. May we follow your example. May we follow your pattern. May you be our foundation for this, God. I thank you that we are the body of Christ. I thank you that you've placed us all together. I thank you for every single person here and those not here that are part of this group of believers. Thank you, God, for this body. Thank you that you made us so diverse, that we are different, with different purposes, with different roles. And God, I thank you that we are all equal. (laughs) Oh, God, help us. Help us to understand this and get a grip of it. Help us to live it out. And God, I pray this year, 2022, may we as a church, may our roots go deep into you. Oh, Jesus, that we will remain in you and you in us. May we go so deep in you. Help us individually and as a church, as one. And ultimately, God, I pray for us. May we give you glory. May we as a church, may our unity be a witness to others. May our unity bring others into this body. God, I pray that you'll help us because we cannot do it without you. We cannot do it apart from you. Help us, lead us. May we be one as you are one. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. I think I'm handing over to you, Tim. Maybe we could just leave this up yep. for like the year. No, it might be too much. <laughs> I almost feel like I want to go, look, come and I feel like I want to hang gaffer tape there as well. And just like, I just feel like you take away the picture. You can tell I'm a visual. I'm a visual person. It helps me. But just maybe at home, have some gaffer tape and just gaffer tape it. Create it yourself. I'm going to stop talking. Tim. <laughs> Thank you so much, MJ. That was a great word. And can I, can I just encourage you, well, encourage myself as well, but, you know, don't just go home and forget all about this. Can I encourage you to meditate on what's been said this morning? You know, because God wants us to draw closer to him. And, you know, as you were talking and I was looking at this, it just sort of hit me how Jesus is the physical manifestation of the Father, But actually, the body of Christ is to be the physical manifestation of Jesus. You know, we have a role to play, and we will only play it as we draw closer to him, as we allow him to work in us what he he wants to do and make us like him. So thank you so much for that, MJ, and watch it online again. And just draw it in and drink it in and let it minister to your spirits. Well, we're going to close. We're going to finish now. Um, Not even with a song today. Goodness me. So you let off, Heidi. (laughs) Um, But we'll be doing the prayer from next Saturday. So remind you to turn up Saturday morning. Um, if, if you're w- wanting to give to the church, um, it's all online. The details hopefully will come up on the screen in a moment. Um, but you can find it on our website. There we go. Um, so all our giving's online, as I say. So our offerings come that way these days. Um, thank you so much for coming along this morning, being part of this, and just meeting with us and helping us to worship the Lord. Um, It's great to see you. Um, Let's just pray. Father, we just thank you for this time in your presence today. We thank you that the people have turned up, Lord, that they want to meet with you, that we want to be the body of Christ. Now, Father, help us to do what we've just heard. 
and to love you and love one another and really join together. Lord, we just commit ourselves to you and we just pray that this, this coming week we will focus on you more and more and more, Lord, and that we will grow closer to you, that we will be ready for the prayer next week, and that we will be the people you've called us to be. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you at home. And have a great week, folks.